Hi guys, I hope you're doing fine. I'm Milad from Cyrix Space and in this video we want to talk about on how a parachute can be ejected using a rocket motor so our rocket hopefully doesn't end up looking like this. So in theory we want something like this. We have our rocket ready to launch, our rocket takes off and reaches the apogee and in a suitable point in time during the descent the parachute should be ejected. And as you can tell it didn't go quite as planned during this flight. The parachute was detached from the rocket. So what do we need? Of course we need a rocket or in this case a MAL rocket and obviously we need a parachute like this here. You see this is actually a quite a big parachute as you can see and depending on the size of the MAL rocket you need a suitable or different size of a parachute. So the bigger the rocket the bigger the parachute so you always need for that specific rocket a suitable parachute or you may even need multiple parachutes. But this is actually not the parachute of that long march MAL rocket so this is the parachute that was included it with that model rocket set that I bought so I didn't build that model rocket myself I purchased it and I assembled it but I think from the tip of the nose cone to the bottom we have 40 centimeters if I'm not mistaken and the weight was about 50 or 55 grams and as I said this is the parachute that was included it is sufficient for this model rocket but obviously it would not be sufficient if you would have a bigger model rocket so let's have a quick talk about the model rocket don't be confused that the rocket looks damaged but uh, that's going to be the subject of another video just ignore that for the moment okay so this is the chinese long march mall rocket we have here the nose cone then we have a big tube that is the rocket body and we have here the uh, a booster actually there are four boosters the other three are here but as i said that's going to be the subject of another video okay so you see here this is the tube that is the rocket body and up here goes the parachute so you have a parachute this here and then you fold it in a specific way and then you put that parachute inside the rocket body or the tube up here you take the nose cone off and then you put the parachute inside the rocket okay so down here goes the rocket motor and between the parachute and the rocket motor you put some protection wadding well actually it is called recovery wadding but i called it protection wadding however this is the stuff that i'm using this is a very heat resistant material which you're going to place in the middle of the rocket between the parachute and the rocket motor one of the main tasks of this protection wadding is to protect the parachute from the heat of the rocket motor So how can we eject the parachute using a rocket motor? Okay, let's talk about it. So we have the rocket motor and we put the rocket motor inside the rocket like this, okay? The model rocket sits on the launch pad, we ignite the rocket motor and we have a liftoff. The rocket motor takes off, flies into the sky and then we have actually different phases of that rocket motor. So the rocket motor has different phases. In the first phase, the rocket motor generates a thrust. We need that thrust obviously for the rocket to take off and fly hopefully into the sky. So that's the first phase. After the first phase, the thrust phase, we have a second and a third phase. But let's talk about the third phase first. In the third phase we have a little explosion that comes out of that hole here that's the opposite side of the nozzle you can actually hear the little explosion in this video here so this is the first phase and now listen carefully you can actually hear the little explosion and the ejected object was the rocket motor that little explosion generates a overpressure inside the tube of the model rocket and what that overpressure does is actually just pushes out the nose cone of the rocket and that nose cone itself pulls out the parachute. And now back to the second phase. What is it? The second phase is actually just a delay. So we have the first phase in which the rocket motor generates a thrust. Then we have the second phase in which the rocket motor does not generate any thrust. And we have the third phase with the explosion which ejects the parachute. Let me give you an example. We have here D97 rocket motors. Okay, they look like this. We have a total impulse of 20 newton seconds. We have a thrust of 9 newtons of about 9 newtons and a burning period of 2.1 
seconds and we have a delay of seven seconds. So those seven seconds mean that there will be a delay from the end of the thrust phase until the parachute will be ejected. So you have to choose a suitable rocket motor for your rocket. Okay, so now we talked about it. We have a thrust phase, we have a delay phase, and then we have a little explosion. But can we see that? I mean, how does it look like? And here comes my model rocket test stand into play. This here is my rocket motor test stand. And it is not finished at all. As you can see here, those are some cables here. This is a load cell, and this is the rocket motor holder. The holder itself is 3D printed. I used a transparent filament and you can just take a rocket motor, put it inside the holder, ignite it and see what happens. There will be a separate video on how I built that test stand, so stay tuned for that. Okay, enough theory. Let's ignite some motors. Okay guys, so this is the setup. We have the rocket motor test stand. We have the motor holder, which sits on top of the load cell. And inside the motor holder, I placed the rocket motor, of course. On the bottom right, you see the cable of the electrical igniter. And the end of that goes into the rocket motor. I thought that I prepared everything properly, but let's have a look what happened. I really forgot to lock the test stand so it couldn't be pushed back from the thrust of the rocket motor. So because I hadn't anything to fix it into the ground, I just used a little rock. That should be fine for now, and by the way, the rock was way heavier than it seems to be. So let's go for the second try. So you may have already recognized that there wasn't any explosion at the end. And this is because there are different types of rocket motors. This particular rocket motor is not suitable and cannot be used to eject a parachute. As I said before, you have to use a suitable rocket motor which is capable to eject a parachute. Let's have a look at this one here. We saw the first phase with the thrust and now we see the delay phase which we discussed before. And this was the third phase with the little explosion, which usually would eject the parachute. Now let's have a look at this image here. You can clearly see the little explosion at the bottom of the rocket motor. And this little explosion is going to produce an overpressure inside the rocket, which then is going to push the nose cone and the parachute out of the rocket. Simple but effective. To be honest, I really like this image because it clearly shows what happens. And it kinda looks cool as far as I'm concerned. Let's have a look at another one. This is the delay phase again. And by the way, the 3D printed motor holder wasn't damaged at all. Quite surprising for PLA. Okay guys, that was it on how you can eject a parachute using a rocket motor. I hope you liked it. In that case, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want more of that content and click the bell icon if you want to get notified in case of a new video. Until then, take care and don't forget to rock it.